because they'll talk about bare double prints. You can see this is not a this is not a bare double print because it's not even. If this is a bare double print. You'd have look at this a depression here, which is really strange, right? Which is probably them. What does that mean? I tend to think like if you're looking at it like this, you can see how when the toes pushed off, they probably left a little hump right here behind the behind the toes, right? Uh huh. So it's almost as if. This one has it a little bit less, but you see those toes are dug in, right? So if you're walking barefoot and you've got really flexible toes, you're going to dig those toes in and push off with them. You're going to leave a little hump back there. Here's the thing. I, I, don't, different theory. I, think they're, I think they're plant people. I know you're going to think I'm nuts. I am beginning to recognize that these creatures, not only are they real, 100% real, which in itself is just mind-blowing, right? It's mind-blowing. We thought, oh, it's Bigfoot. No, Bigfoot is an actual, actual real creature, but it's also a creature that possesses... <laughs> it possesses abilities that people won't... They can't wrap their heads around. Like, these things can turn invisible. I know that's crazy. They're associated with glowing orbs in the forest. They're associated with uh, flying saucers, if you will. They're connected to, like, Whitley Stryber's little aliens, little gray aliens, and... There's a menagerie, there's a cornucopia of these creatures. It's almost like when you go into the forest, I like to say, when you go into the forest now, you're encountering Avatar, The Hobbit, and Harry Potter all wrapped into one. I've had people tell me that they found deer they thought were killed by them. Oh, yes. I've... But then again, the ones that we're dealing with seem to be more, they look more like people than apes. Yeah, they? see, we're looking at something oh, different. Oh. Yeah, but who knows? Awakens the rainbow serpent. It's really tough to do that when the ground's frozen. Like he was saying about something pushing that tree, wiggling trees. How they mark their territory or something? I right? don't. I don't know, but the. Uh, they're definitely exhibiting incredible strength. That was really uh, pretty interesting because that could either be an owl or a coyote or a Sasquatch person. And coyotes don't usually respond to you. You heard that too, didn't you? Well, yeah, I had to step away from you guys because you were chatting. Well, about four years ago, when I really started looking into this, I probably would have jumped on board that, that bad bandwagon. The problem I have with it being either Neanderthal or a variant of Gigantopithecus or any type of archaic hominid, like uh, there's a whole bunch of them, you know, you've got those, all the Austropithecus and what is it, Homo Heiberberg Brigensis, a bunch of fancy Linus nomenclature. But the problem with that is if these creatures were Neanderthal, we'd have one in a box because the premise behind them being either Gigantopithecus or a Neanderthal, and the so-called apers in the Bigfoot community like to go along with the idea that they're gig Gigantopithecus, which was primarily uh, a huge, like, gorilla, right, that lived in Southeast Asia that fed probably 90% on bamboo, so it was a specialist, like a, like a panda bear. Neanderthal was thought to be primarily a carnivore, like up to 90% of its caloric intake that it took in and they estimated that they had to take in from like four to eight thousand calories a day a lot more than we do right we only need like two thousand calories so neanderthal existed during a time when there were vast herds of what's known as megafauna any critter that's over uh 70 kilograms so you'd be talking about like bison and mammoths and those types of things do we have vast herds of megafauna see we don't we don't have this prey base that supports the premise of these things being either Gigantopithecus or Neanderthal. Due to that very logical argument and my own interaction with people that have seen these things and my experiences myself, I'm leaning more along the lines that there's something much stranger than that. You have to come to the conclusion at some point that, yeah, we're dealing with something really smart. If we take into account that these creatures are real based on the sheer amount of reports we're getting and then the lack of being able to put it in the box we want to put it in we are missing a big part of that picture and the big part that we're missing is yeah these things are super super smart and they have abilities that appear to be magic now i don't know if they're magic or not i i have a degree in biology so i like science so i tend to think that they're operating 
within the reams of science, but they're doing things with science that we don't have, we don't know about. We haven't gotten there yet. We're still learning stuff, right? You've got a huge amount of skeptics that think they know something. Like, they, they know what they know. They don't want to turn around and go, you know what, maybe we don't know everything. Like, we don't know everything. And that just drives another nail in the casket, right? It just, it provi what it does is it provides ammunition for people to turn around and ridicule people that are having legit encounters. And I can tell you from having spoken to a lot of people that have seen these things, one of the greatest fear that these people have is fear of ridicule. But I'm like, you know what, I'm not an actor, and furthermore, I don't, we don't have to fake this stuff because it's real. I can't say